Do you like wrestling trivia? Then check out the five-star match game, the Pro Wrestling Quiz Show. I'm Joe Gagne, and every episode, I grill three contestants with five rounds of power-packed wrestling trivia. We have over 30 evergreen episodes in the archives covering WWE, AEW, Japan, Mexico, and much, 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 much more. Play along at home and check it out today. Cheering at pro wrestling shows in Japan is back, and 2023 is already shaping up to be a big year in the history of pro res. That's why you should listen to the Emerald Flow Show. From the Royal Road to the Green Mat, Paul and Gerard take you into the world of All Japan Pro Wrestling and Pro Wrestling NOAA. Not only do we analyze events, but we examine business, who is getting over, what angles are working, or not. Occasionally, we take a look at other Japanese promotions like DDT and Zero One. So if you're looking for more coverage of the world of Japanese wrestling, check out the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, available on all of your favorite podcast apps. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Welcome to Jumping Bomb Audio. Welcome back to Jumping Bomb Audio, the number one show all about the world of Joshi Pro Wrestling. My name is Taylor, and I am joined as always by my good friend and co-host Kelly. Kelly, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. If there's any mothers listening right now, or you have a mother, happy Mother's Day. Tell a mother happy Mother's Day, even if it's not Mother's Day anymore, which it won't be when you listen to this. But, uh, you know, maybe you forgot. Make a card, throw a five in there. And I think in this episode, we're going to be talking about some mothers. Probably. Uh, Probably. I don't know. I don't really have, uh, my knowledge doesn't extend to that, but it's likely, right? Hang on, let me open up my mom's binder and let me take a look. Well, we got a lot to talk about this episode. We got some stardom to talk about. We got some Tokyo Joshi and so much more we've got shows from japan we've got shows from america that Ooh. just recently happened we got it all here on jumping bomb audio so let's dive right in but before we do gotta get the plugs if you're not following us on twitter do so at j bomb audio or if you just want to follow kelly you can follow him at comic kelly or me at tay mambo Subscribe to us on your podcast app of choice so you always get the latest episodes. And if that app of choice happens to be Apple Podcasts, we would love, 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 love a five-star rating and review. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can donate to the show at redcircle.com slash shows slash jumping dash bomb dash audio so let's get into it our first show that we are going to be talking about is the big stardom show from may 4th fukuoka goddess legend sweet stardom from the fukuoka international center in front of 1338 fans kelly what do you think about the show overall overall it was all right uh i don't know definitely a b show but not bad Frankly, I thought this show was <laughs> I thought this show was mostly garbage until uh the top of the card. I can see that. Including my notes, where I don't know if I was just like in a or maybe, you know, the last show was so good that I'm like living off the high of, you know, such a good show, but like halfway through the show I was like I am not enjoying myself. <laughs> this is like not for me. And then, you know, and some things at the top of the card I didn't like, which we'll get into. But um, I thought a strong recovery. The matches that really 
needed to deliver did deliver. So it ended up being, I think, a fine show. I think I agree with you, but really for me, a struggle uh, at the at the beginning. Yeah, no, uh, understandable. So like many stardom shows of recent memory, this one started with a rumble match, a Fukuoka rumble, where Suzu Suzuki emerged victorious. She talked about after her victory that it was her first ever rumble, and she's one for one. So uh, a very good job there. Kelly, got any good thoughts about this Fukuoka rumble? Um... No. Cool. No good thoughts. I I do. It really kind of. This is. I don't know why, but it, this one finally drove it home for me that it's like, oh, they don't do surprises and rumbles anymore. It's just slap a mask on someone and send them out there again. <laughs> it's it largely is the same bit over and over. Yeah. Again. <laughs> like this is that's just what they do now. It's not. There are no surprises. It is just some people are working twice that night. <laughs> I just started listing random notes, not particularly even about the match itself. Uh, The first thing I do have to say is I really liked the picture in picture. That was nice. Um, I thought that was a good touch. I'm surprised more people don't do that. Yeah. Um, You know, when people are entering, there's usually not actually anything going on in the ring. Uh, But I liked it in sort of an idea of it like oh we're not missing anything and it's a cool technology and it looked nice and it looked professional um so i enjoyed that aspect now kelly my next note i wrote before uh you reached out to me at one point with a question um sorry to expose the inner workings of the (laughs) show uh you reached out to me with a question which is the opposite of what i'm about to say which is that I have just decided, I will not explain this because I have no explanation, that I'm just a Hanako fan. Okay. You reached out to me like an hour after I wrote this note to say, who is this person? I couldn't, I don't know if I saw her prior to this. I promise you, we have talked about her on the show and you have seen her. I think I've just erased her from my brain. Cause I, and the funny thing is now after seeing her here and on new blood, I like her, but for whatever reason, the first time, mul- maybe the first multiple times I saw her, literally no impression was left on me <laughs> because I have no memories of this person. I just think, I think she's got a good look. Like she doesn't look like a rookie to me. Um, she doesn't really come across that way. I mean, in ring sort of, but I don't know. I just sort of have enjoyed seeing her wrestle now. I'm yeah, no, I, th- I thought she I, was really good. I said I had no explanation, but there's the explanation. Yeah. <laughs> um, other random notes was Xena being announced as born in 1997 made me feel old for some reason, even though there are people in this company who are much younger. I can see that is. though. It was yeah. like 1997. I was like, Ooh boy. Yeah. Uh, my major note is, <laughs> I guess I'll read this verbatim, uh, what I wrote. Is anyone freaking watching these and thinking, oh, good, thank God for this rumble on the show? No. Okay. <laughs> is anyone funny. just like, oh, man, I really hope my faves big, s- strong stardom machine and super strong stardom giant machine and super strong stardom machine show up. I hope they're at the merch table. (laughs) Just someone being like, oh, God, I hope there's like a 20 person rumble on the show. Oh, please, (laughs) please. Um, Who was Tengen Mask? Who do you think that was? I I don't know. Does it matter? (laughs) What if it was Kikataro? Well, it was funny because (laughs) it sort of looked that way. And I was like, we're sort of like. They should have just got Kikataro at that point. (laughs) Felt like sort of walking under a ladder. It was Kikataro we have at home. (laughs) It was like, oh, we can do this. We can sort of get close. And I'm like, no, you don't want to bring that energy back. (laughs) Um, And and my other note was Suzu is too good for this. And she proved it by winning it. Really? I thought, why is Suzu in this match? This is really weird. And then she kind of what I thought, too. When she came out, I was like, if she doesn't win this. Oh, what are, what are we in for with this run? <laughs> um, the last thing is after the match happened, 
Um, Mai is Mai Sakurai is in the ring. She's going. She's promoing about oh you commoners, uh, you're gonna go home and eat what whatever she was talking about. And she's like, I'm gonna go have some fancy meal. And first of all, a general note is that I thought the crowd was terrible for this show. Um, the, except, not great. Except not for the main great. event, felt like a co- like I don't know if there were COVID restrictions. Um, but it felt like a COVID that's, clap crowd. That's what I thought with the New Blood show too. See, I thought the New Blood show was better than this show. I thought I mean, New I, Blood. I, thought I they was were like, well, people bad. are reacting. This yeah. it was just sort of like clap, clap, clap. But anyway, my Sakurai is cutting this promo. She's like, "Oh, you commoners, you go live ten in a room or whatever." She's saying, <laughs> and for some reason, people started like lightly clapping. <laughs> Except one guy in the back went, boo. And, <laughs> and it really made me laugh. Because I was like, I, why are people clapping? And then the one guy booing, I was like, okay, that guy gets it. Yeah. I, I It's starting to feel with these shows, like this, and I thought the New Blood, that the crowds don't know how to react anymore. Which makes me wonder... Since stardom has grown so much since the pandemic started, is this a bunch of new fans that only know the pandemic era of wrestling and just generally don't know how to react to wrestling shows unless they're prompted to clap, like with the Starlight Kid or the Mirai uh, claps, you know? I mean, it could be. You may be, yeah. And they're just like... Yeah, and if and especially like if they like it, let's say they just watch Stardom, like they just got into Stardom for whatever reason. There, there was some sort of crossover at some point that that's what hooked them, and they only watch Stardom, and they just haven't gone in the back catalog. So all they've got is just like pandemic era stuff. So they're like, we just politely clap. That's what we do. But it's but the last show, you know, the big show, people were reacting very well. Mm-hmm. So someone knows. Yeah. And it seems like it, it almost seems like it would be the opposite where if they're newer fans, I would think that they would be at the bigger shows and that the people at these quote unquote smaller big shows, I guess you could call them would probably be longer fans, right? Like I, maybe that's wrong, but probably, but you never know if like someone got hardcore into them over the pandemic and like, but the also hardcore. they were, they were good for the main event. So that's, yeah, sort of that's true. The whole thing wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I so, don't know what these crowds I don't know, are doing. But bad crowd, bad crowd. I thought, except for that one guy. Um, <laughs> saying boo. If the, that was you, if you're listening, you were, you were one of the good ones. <laughs> good job. The next match was a tag match. The stars duo of Hannon and Mayu Iwatani defeating the Club Venus team of Jesse and Mariah May in 8 minutes and 55 seconds. Now, I know from watching her, Mariah May is good in ring. Mm-hmm. I cannot determine. I've now watched her, I don't know how many times, six times, something like that. I cannot determine if Jesse is any good. I think Jessie has potential. I don't think she's there yet. I think we see moments of her being good, but I don't think she is actively good yet. I think if she's bad, they're doing a good job of hiding it. And if she's good, they're doing a poor job of showing it. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's, I think she's more bad than she is good at this point. And they're doing a good job of hiding that she's bad that was really my main takeaway from the match there was a lot of weird stuff here with people um double team like lift people doing like lifting people up in double teams where they're it felt like a lot of times where they were like like we got to get her up and they weren't coordinated in lifting someone uh which sort of threw me off but other than that i thought it was fine yeah I have one prediction coming out of this match. I don't know when it will happen. I don't know if it'll happen. But my prediction is that someday Mariah May will kick Mina out of her own unit and will become the biggest heel in the company. 
All right. Write that one down, everyone. Yep. That that's my prediction. Again, could be could be a year off, could be two years off, who knows? But I see it happening. And remember, everyone, Kelly's last prediction was Himika was going to pull a Mark Henry at her retirement and yep. keep wrestling. Yep. I didn't watch her retirement show yet, so it might have happened. <laughs> it's still possible. It's still possible. Anything's possible. The only Maybe. thing I've seen from that retirement show was Daichi getting hit in the nuts with a baseball, and you know what? Real good stuff. Did people send that to you, or did you find it? Um... It was sent to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got some Daichi to talk about in the next match, which was another tag match, this time featuring the Cosmic Angels, Sayuri Ano and Tom Nakano, defeating Ruaka and Starlight Kid in 11 minutes and 4 seconds. Kelly, what did you think of this match? I liked this a lot, actually. Uh, Starlight Kid was great. I thought Ruaka did pretty well. Uh, I think Tom and Sayori are a great team together. So, like, I don't know. I thought this was pretty good. I went three and a half stars. We're brain match, because I wrote, I really <laughs> enjoyed this. I went three and a half stars. I thought it was really good. Felt like Tom sort of took the night off, which is fine. Yeah. Um, because the main part of this was Sayori Ano and Starlight Kid sequences, which were all great. Yep. Is there any bigger gulf of talent between two people who can be in a tag team in stardom than Starlight Kid and Ruaka? Uh, yes. Swap out Ruaka with uh, Tora. Uh, it was just like, oh, Sayori <laughs> Ano, oh, Tom Nakano, oh, Starlight Kid, oh, Ruaka. Um... <laughs> I'm telling you, I've really turned around on Ruaka since Tora came back, and I'm like, oh yeah, she's way worse. <laughs> um, you know, I have seen a lot, something that I was thinking of, I haven't seen a lot of it, and most people are not this way, but I have seen this small sort of underswell of people who I think believe that the only good women's wrestlers are in stardom. In Japan, I should say. Joshi wrestlers. So, like, wait, hold on. The only good Joshi wrestlers are in stardom, or the only good res women's wrestlers overall are in stardom? The only good Joshi, like, ah, Joshi. I, okay. I mean, the American scene is not very good, but... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people who are like, oh, these freelancers come in, they're, you know, none of them are as good as all these people in uh, Stardom. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. It's it's very small. I'm not saying this is most. I'm not saying it's, you know, a majority of people. But I have seen this, you know, sometimes after the big shows, people will go, oh, this match would have been better if, you know, so-and-so wasn't there who's a freelancer or whatever. And I think Yuck, that's take not out Maya Yukihi, <laughs> put in Miyu Amasaki. It'll be so much better. Um, it feels like a weird, like W, almost like a WWE brain thing to me. Yes. Where it's like, well, if they're not here, what could they possibly be doing? And then they're here, and they're like, oh, they're they're amazing, they're incredible, and that's why they're in stardom. And I just sort of want to caution against that. Again, I'm not saying this is really any major group of people, but it's something I've sort of seen growing. And Sarah, you know, is another sort of tick in the opposite column where it's like, no, there are many, you know, as you said, Maya Yukihi, who came in and had that great match with Julia. It's like these people are around, but stardom is really the plat. It's the easiest platform for someone to come in and say, OK, here's um, how good I am, as opposed to someone on some streaming service that 15 people are watching. Yeah. Um, at least in America. So just sort of like a caution against that. If, if you listening have started to believe that know that that's maybe not true. And that, you know, there are many very talented people. One might uh, say pump the brakes. <laughs> um, but most importantly, Kelly, we have to talk about Daichi fucking up the finish um because Sayori went to do the role it was slightly slow in her doing the back bend over Daichi mm -hmm. started counting <laughs> and he was done counting by the t and but yeah. Sayori was still in the middle of doing the pin and he was like one two three well the match is over 
And I was like, well, that looks dumb. I wonder if they took my advice and stopped telling him the finishes. (laughs) And look what it did. It backfired. Yeah. Um, But you know what? I'll take that over. Because I didn't really notice him fucking any two up to any 2.99 kickouts this time. Yes, this was the only moment that I noticed him. But I was like, it looks silly that you finish counting and she's still like moving through the pin. Yeah. <laughs> it just like looks goofy. It's like, oh, this person is so bad that the person hasn't even gone into the pin and it's like, well, you got pinned. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Um, But yeah, I was with you. I really enjoyed this. I went three and a half stars. I thought it was easily the highlight of the undercard mm-hmm. uh, by far uh the next match was another oedo tai match the duo of momo watanabe and natsuka tora defeating the duo of konami and suri in seven minutes and two seconds speaking of huge gulfs of talent here <laughs> is momo watanabe and natsuka tora there we go there it is um why did Kona- why, why did they bring in konami for this we can really just say that about almost any time konami's around now but like what for a seven minute mid card match with i like don't understand i don't understand why how they use her anymore i just it fucking doesn't make any sense uh to me there was nothing to this i didn't really care much about it or for it it clearly was spoilers to set up a tag challenge later in the show um, with a win for the Oedo Tai duo, but it just sort of was like a match. This was the moment in the show where I was like, okay, what's going on here? Um, <laughs> you know, our third of four consecutive tag matches. Yeah. And I was just sort of like, Ugh, okay. Yeah, I I don't know why they brought in Konami for this match. It their their usage of her this year is so bizarre in every way, <laughs> and I would love to know why. Like, what are the extenuating circumstances that caused this? Why doesn't she work for them more often? Why did they just put her in these weird spots? Like, I I don't get it. But you know what? Whatever. Uh, this was a big nothing match. It, it'll be forgotten by the end of this show. <laughs> the next match was another tag team match. This one, Donna Del Mundo, Julia, and Micah defeating Saya Kamatani and Utami in 16 minutes and 22 seconds when Micah pinned Utami. Uh, this, to me, felt very much like sort of a standard issue tag match. Um... I wrote in my notes, good win for Micah, or is it? (laughs) Um, I don't know. Utami, to me, just feels sort of, like, aimless at this point. Yeah. Utami is very much, if she's not in a title hunt, we don't know what to do with her. Like, what has she done since losing the title? She's had a challenge. She's had a... She's challenged for titles. But it just feels like she just sort of is in these random tag matches to yeah. like. Be oh, like, she oh. had the she had the feud with uh, Tora. Don't forget that. That did a lot I for her. No, I do want to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I, I will forget that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, clearly that's the point of this was like, oh, now Micah is moving up. I think now Himika's leaving. So it's sort of like, now we're going to do something with Micah, at least for the moment. So we're going to have her beat Utami, but Utami really just doesn't feel like any, like all that special now because the upper echelon has been, it feels to me like refilled with other people and Utami hasn't kept it, you know, Julia, Tom, Shuri, you know, it feels like that upper echelon is now different people. And Utami has just sort of sunk back towards the mid card. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just a weird 
it was just something I was thinking about as I'm like, oh, Micah Pindu Tommy, this is supposed to be a big deal. Does it actually feel like a big deal to me? And the answer is not really. No. No, it's it's weird. Their booking of her is strange. It really just seems like at this point she is around to be a title challenge. That's like a big deal. I for the most part, it, it, they think it should be a big deal. Whether it is or not is up to be uh, determined. Uh, I don't know. Remember, like, I don't know, what was that? Year, like a couple, like half a year ago or so when people were saying, oh, she's headed to AEW. <laughs> and then just nothing happened from that. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's right, because she was tweeting with Abaddon. <laughs> That's oh, that's right. right. That's our okay. I remember what spawned all that. Now speaking of, speaking about something else, I forgot. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one I, way to keep her real hot. Uh, Natsukatora and Abaddon. Yeah, I had to. I had to work my way through that. I was like, why were people saying that? Oh yeah, that bizarre thing. So yeah, I don't know. She just feels kind of aimless, and who who knows? Maybe they're just running out her contract. Maybe she does want to go to AEW. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see, but it was a big big thought here as she got pinned. Yeah. Yeah, overall, I thought it was a decent enough match. Nothing like super special, but an enjoyable watch. The next match was our first title match for the high speed title, the champion Azumi making another successful defense defeating May Sierra in 10 minutes and 46 seconds. Kelly, what did you think of this first title match? Uh, what I'm about to say is probably shocking, but I thought this was good. I know everyone, no one was expecting either of us to like a uh, an Azumi high speed title match, but here we are. Really good match. Uh, just wild nonstop action the whole time. I thought it was great. I went four stars. I was slightly lower than you. I thought it was good. I thought it was not as good as I was expecting it to be. And there were a couple of moments when it felt a little disjointed. There was a part at the beginning where they were sort of doing the classic high speed sequence. And like May stopped in the middle of the ring, clearly expecting something to happen. And it didn't. And then oh, they, were yeah, like, that's oh. Right. they were like, oh, okay, now you do this. And they got back into it. It wasn't a huge issue, but it was like, hmm, like yeah. What, I thought Azumi saved that pretty quickly. Uh, May taking multiple bumps from the apron to the floor, I thought was <laughs> pretty wild. Um, <laughs> the one where she jumped off to do the drop kick and just landed uh, very hard was great. I'm just very confused by the result. Yeah, Azumi, it would have made like, sense for this to be the one, but who knows. Like, I guess there's something where is Maceira not going to stick around? Like, is she not sticking around? If that's the case, then yeah, then, that makes sense, then. I would say, oh, OK, then that's why you don't want to put the title. Although she's got, you know, she had a match at New Blood. She has a match on the Flashing Champions show coming up. So she's clearly sticking around for something or for some time. It just feels like. This, to me, if we're assuming, okay, she is sticking around. Let's work under that assumption. This, to me, feels like the most easy slam dunk booking decision you can make. Mm -hmm. A champion who's set the record for defenses, clearly doing great, clearly has been helped by this title reign, but now has faced almost everyone. Versus someone new coming into the company. If they're signed, hopefully they're staying with you long term. Why would you not switch the title at this point? Yeah, it was very weird. Especially considering the fact that immediately afterwards, Saki Kashima comes out. And they set up the three-way with Azumi, Fukigen Death, and Saki. And it feels like, well, we've run through everyone else. So we're going right back to where the high-speed title was, which was like... Oh, it's a division of four people in it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Maybe Saki gets the flash pin in the three way and wins the title. I don't. I don't know. Seems like a major downgrade for that 
I yeah, maybe, even though I maybe like they, Saki. Yeah, maybe they don't want Azumi to get pinned. And, you know, maybe they have bigger plans for Maceer than the high-speed title, but I can't imagine them having bigger plans for her than they would for, like, Azumi or Starlight Kid. Yeah. So it just felt very weird. I went three and three quarters, so I still really liked the match. I just sort of, it ended, and I was like, well, that's very strange. <laughs> um, but enough of singles matches. We're back with more tag matches on this show. This one Ooh. for the Goddesses of Stardom title match. The God's Eye team of Amisore and Mirai, the New Eras, defeated former champions fwc hazuki and koguma in 17 minutes and 36 seconds kelly i know you agree with us with me on this there is no one maybe in all of wrestling that i hashtag don't get more than mirai yeah i just don't see it nope not a bit her look is not, you know, her look, I think, is average. She's not particularly impressive in ring to me compared to many other people in this company. And she's clearly getting this weird push of winning the Cinderella tournament twice, winning the tag titles and it just is not there with me, and I don't care. No, I I don't get it. I. She's a good hand, real real solid worker, I suppose, but I don't I don't see it. I don't see her ever being a top person. Like at this point, if they forget that she won the Cinderella and she never gets her title shot. Who cares? That wouldn't surprise me in the least. <laughs> like if she just forgets to speak up at the press conference or whatever, it's like, oh, I'd like to challenge and just they never comes up. Well, you know, there we go. I yeah, I don't get it. It's she's fine. She's absolutely fine. She is not a top top star. To me, a big thing that sticks out to me is when she was in Tokyo Joshi it felt like she was this young you know she was this younger wrestler but the thing was sort of like oh she's really tough like even though she hasn't wrestled that much she's very tough and she stuck out from a lot of other people in Tokyo Joshi especially that time when Tokyo Joshi was still sort of gaining this new identity of better in-ring work and stuff like that. She's now in stardom, and I feel like everyone in stardom, or, not, you know, not everyone, but 90%, not like Fukigen Death, obviously, <laughs> are presented as tough. Yeah. And it's like, what is this wrestler's character? They are tough. And it's like, great. But everyone else in the company is also tough. And sort of all wrestlers are in a way very tough. But there's a way of presenting someone above and beyond that that makes them stick out. You think of like New Japan. You think of Ishii. You think of Suzu Minoru Suzuki. Those guys, if I asked you who is tough, really tough in New Japan, I'm sure those would be two guys that a lot of people would mention. That doesn't mean that people don't think you know, Okada is not tough, but there's some special aspect of guys who are extra, like I'm going in there and I'm going to just like fight through it. Tokyo Joshi. I think you can make that argument about Miyu Watanabe. You would say she's very tough. She isn't really presented that way as a character, but that's the way her in ring comes across to me. And so to me, Mirai has sort of come to stardom. Her character is sort of, she comes out and she's smiling and then she does the clap, 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 clap. And then she's like, ah, but I'm very tough in the ring. And it's like, not really. <laughs> You're as equally as tough as every single other wrestler on this roster. You know, except for like Saki Kashima, Fukigen Death, some of the rookies. 
But what if I asked you, okay, well, name me a wrestler who's tough and wants to speak to a manager. Yeah, that I mean, the haircut is exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because I do think now look in the look department in the sort of uh gear department, she has been passed by Ami Sore. Yeah. Who now I think looks better, but I now think Ami Sore looks like um if there was like a stardom video game and you had a creator wrestler and you had a creator wrestler and it was like you have these five stardom outfits to choose from (laughs) she is now wearing one of five stardom out like they feel all cut the same like they all have the same shape to them they have the bands around the legs you know the tassels which i know at least one or two other wrestlers have had on their gear at one point um karma has them on the gear um it just looks to me like i'm like okay she does look better that is true but now she looks like most of the other mid-card wrestlers in this company yeah i'm still not feeling the extensions i I mean she should have stuck with her old hair I mean, sure, but, and it's funny because it feels sort of like a mirror image of Hannon who just changed her outfit. Like they, yeah, they they did that in the same way. Yeah. They really should have planned that out a little better. Cause it feels like they were like, okay, we're upgrading you and we're going to upgrade you in both the exact same way. Now, obviously the colors are a little bit different, but it's like the same hair. And it's like, now you're in the. You know, now you've moved up because your hair is nice and blonde and it's an improvement. But and I think I'm sort of more excited for Ami Sore than I am for Mirai, but I'm still. Sort oh, 100 percent. Like, this team just sort of feels like stock. Stardom characters, and I'm not sure if you gave me two other people with some big exceptions two other people at random from the stardom roster. I'm not sure there's many situations in which I'm going, Oh yeah. Mirai and Ami Sore are, are definitely going to make a better match than the two people. Like, yeah. Momo I... Watanabe and Micah, Julia and Saya Kamatani, you know, Saya Kamatani. I have, we both have a lot of issues <laughs> with her. But there is, you know, the reason she was put in the spot she was in is she has talent. Yeah, there's something to her. She's very talented. She's highly athletic. You know, there are things there where I say, I understand why this is happening. I don't particularly enjoy it because of X, Y, and Z thing. But I understand why you would say, hey, let's push this person. Mirai, I don't get it. Nope. And I really think that nothing has been helped by the way they won the titles. Well, it was funny because in the beginning, when they were uh, wandering around the ring, I thought, oh, are they going to make the characters that they purposely try and get count outs? Every That's kind of what I thought match? was happening, too, when they were like when they left them out in the arena. Because <laughs> I was like, that might be actually interesting. I yeah. don't know how excited I am by it, but... I at least can sit there and go, okay, it's a direction. It's a story. It's something. But just uh, the match, I thought it was plum average. Um, frankly, I was pulling for FWC to pull the upset and win. Oh, yeah. Because they're a great team. Um, uh, and yeah. And then they won. And then Momo and Natsuka Tora came out at the end. And I thought, ooh, there's a match I don't want to see. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, Rossi giveth and Rossi taketh away. He gave us the end of Saya's long reign, and he then made new eras the tag champions. <laughs> Insert picture of Rossi eating a carrot. 
But the main event was for the Wonder of Stardom title match. The new champion, Mina Shirakawa, making her first defense, defeating Natsupoi in 20 minutes and 27 seconds. Thought this match ruled. Thought it was great. Um, I don't know if it was the way the ring was mic'd or it was extra leg slapping or what was going on, but there were some slaps and punches in here that I was like, whoa. Um, there was one where I couldn't even see what was happening because the camera was in the wrong position, but it was like a slap and it was loud. And I was mm-hmm. like, Woo. um, I just thought it w- had a good sense of desperation to it. It felt like two sort of people really fighting to win. I liked that there was the aspects of, um, working on the leg without it sort of turning into a leg match per se. Yes. Yes. Um, I really like that, but I just thought it was really good. I thought it was a great, uh, another great showcase for Mina. I thought, as always, Natsupoi is very good and I think underrated. I went four and a half stars. I thought it was really great. Holy shit. I was, I liked this match. I, I didn't go that high. I went three and three quarters. I thought it was very good. A uh, lot of hard hitting stuff, really strong first defense for Mina. Uh, I don't know. It just felt a little long to me, which looking at the time, it wasn't. I don't know. Maybe it just it, I, at that point, I was like, I just want to be done with this show. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, it felt on the long side. Like I, I had guessed when I looked at like the time, I thought it was going to be like 27 minutes or something. And it was only 20. I was like, geez, okay. So yeah, I don't know. That's probably more of a me problem than the match itself. But overall, I liked it. I thought it was a very good match. So that was Stardom's Fukuoka Goddess Legend Sweet Stardom from May 4th. The day after, Tokyo Joshi had their latest Korokin Hall show, Yes Wonderland 2023, in front of 774 fans. Kelly, what did you think of this show? Um, Pretty good overall. Um. I had to remind myself from my notes real fast because it's like it feels like we watched this show so long ago. Uh, it was a good show overall. Uh, first half was a little iffy, but, you know, that's what you get sometimes with a hurricane that's not like super huge. But overall, good show. Yeah, I liked it. I also am uh, doing sort of the same thing of looking at my notes because this was um, feels like quite a while ago. Um, I think it was good. I think the last two matches were strong. I think it wasn't their best um, Corican show, but had some nice um, matches to it and some nice surprises. Some matches that I thought would be, um, you know, maybe a little lower, finished a little higher, which was a nice surprise. Because usually I'm able to sort of look at matches and say, oh, I think I know where this is sort of going to land. So that was good. But I think... um, you know, a solid show, nothing too crazy, but I enjoyed myself. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Even when, like, with Tokyo Joshi, when their shows don't deliver so much in the in-ring, they're still a fun time. Yeah. The first match was a singles match, Himawari defeating Shino Suzuki in 6 minutes and 28 seconds. I thought this was a solid first match, solid uh, rookie match or younger wrestler match both are clearly developing getting better in ring so not too much to say but i thought that this was you know good for where it is on the card and the expectations she know yes the legendary she know i love it i love it (laughs) we respect the she know much like we respect the he hate me That's exactly right. We'll always have respect for he hate me. (laughs) Anything else to say about this match? No, it was fine. All right. (laughs) The next match was a six person tag team match. Haru Karashiro, Hyper Masao and Runa Okuba defeating Haruna Neko, Palm Harajuku and Raku in 10 minutes and 32 seconds. 
I have a bunch of notes on this match, some of which I don't remember why I wrote down. Um, All right, good. Let's go through them and try and figure out what they mean. The first thing I wrote down is children are naturally evil. Okay. That's uh, because they, you know, they were teamed with Misao and then she had them jump uh, the other team when they were doing the handshake. Yeah, but was it something that they said on commentary or something? I want to say yes. Yeah, that sounds like something Brooks or Parker would say. (laughs) Um, I also wrote, imagine meeting Palm Harajuku in real life. <laughs> As in, like, she's her character in real life? Yeah, but yeah, not in would... a wrestling ring, just like you're walking down the street and you'd be like, what's going on? What's happening? This full-size three-year-old. <laughs> oh, yes, when she said um, that she was a three-year-old child. Yep. And there she couldn't be... Uh, heard or whatever it was um when you download the kroger app you have easy access to savings every day shop weekly sales and get personalized coupons to get the most value out of every trip every time whether you shop in store or online download the kroger app now to save big kroger fresh for everyone must have a digital account to redeem offers restrictions may apply see site for details save big on your favorites with the buy five or more save a dollar each sale simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card kroger fresh for everyone the Haruna Neko versus any of the children's uh, segments were interesting, <laughs> to uh, put it that way. I will the, say that The children still need a lot of work. The children need a lot of work. They're very young, so they have a lot of time. It's perfectly fine. It would be good, and look, they just started, so this is really no one. But they should wrestle. Let's have them wrestle some talented people. Um, yeah once in a while like i I know it sort of would be a little wasteful but you know Mimi yamashita when she comes back let's have them wrestle her let's let's not stick them with haruneko for the next four years please yeah but Um, i do honestly i do think putting them with misao is a good move i like them as her little sidekicks i think that's fun Yes, and I think Hyper Masao, as I've said on the show before, is sneaky, very talented in ring, so she yes. can be very helpful in that aspect. I did also write, uh, my last note on this match was, Palm Harajuku looked like Dr. Death Steve Williams compared to most of the people in this match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I stick by that. Yeah. So it was fine. Like, it was fine. And again, these very young wrestlers, the expectations are, you know, we're not expecting them to be great top of the card wrestlers tomorrow. No. Um, but it is one of those things where, again, the the in-ring sort of bar has gone up. And so it makes it more, you know, back three years ago, if they would have debuted, it would have been like, oh, OK, they're much like many of the other people who debut for Tokyo Joshi, where it takes them a while to get where they're going. And now the gulf is bigger because we have people like Endo and people like Juria Nagano and these people who debut and you're immediately like, whoa, they're really good. Uh, To remember that not everyone is like that. Yeah, it's it. We've we've come to expect a certain level of quality. And, you know, it's sometimes you got to temper your expectations. The next match was a tag match, Wakano Uihara and Yuki Kamafuku defeating Mahiro Kiryu and Toga in 9 minutes and 40 seconds. And of course, we have to talk about what the heck happened at the end of this match. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my first note was, oof, that finish was ugly. And I'm like, what was the finish? And yeah, no, um, Kamiyu was ready to shoot. (laughs) Well, I think she sort of did because she yeah. got very high on the last famous sir. Yeah. She was like, okay, you're going to make me go all the way up there. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, just w- like, I don't, I've never, I'm not a wrestler. I've never been a wrestler. You know, I sort of know how it works, but like what's happening there where you're being like, is it just like finish? And then Toga's thinking, I don't know what the, you know. I don't know what the finish is. I'll just stand here. Yeah. It's like she forgot what the finish was. 
But you would think, I mean, I would think after, you know, you do the first one, you run up and you're like, okay, the person is not ready. I would think you would then say, famous sir. Mm -hmm. Then you go to do it again. The person is not ready. Then I would think you would say, bend over, please. (laughs) And then went to do it again. And she wasn't bent over. So like, I don't know. Maybe every time it was like, finish, finish. Like, I don't know. It was just very strange. Yeah, it was very very ugly. Like, I... I don't know. Maybe we never see these two paired up again. <laughs> they got heat. They got heat, that, brother. Yeah, like, that's kind of what it felt like. It was very weird. This is something we just normally do not see in Tokyo Joshi. So I mean, that, we don't it, really see it a lot. Like, if something, I mean, I can't think of really almost anything. Yeah, that's true. You know, true. you see something, it gets messed up, they do it again, and you're like, okay, they did it again. Even though... I'm usually a person who's like, if something doesn't work, just move on. Now, obviously, yeah. this is the finish. The finish, so you can't really uh, do that. <laughs> but in terms of like, it gets messed up. Okay, it happens. You go, you do it again. Boop, it's over. You know, whoops, we we screwed up for 15 seconds, whatever. But to like do it once, do it again and have it not work. And then the third time, it didn't work. It only <laughs> worked because uh Yuki leapt high, like yeah, four feet in the air, and was like, "I'm doing this whether we like it or not." It just was very strange. It was very weird. Um, other than that, it was sort of just a match. I thought the highlights were the Kamiyu Mahiro interactions. Um, yeah, that was fun. Her doing the apology and Kamiyu coming in and kicking her. And then Mahiro catching the constant attempts at the eye pokes, <laughs> I thought were a lot of fun, you know, playing off that they know each other well. Um, other than that, thought it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, beside the uh, horrible finish, decent enough match. And it's one of those finishes where it's like, okay, Toga's a rookie. Like, at the end of the day, it was a bad finish, but it's sort of like, Eh. like you had already forgot. <laughs> it's funny because you had already forgotten it. Mm-hmm. So it's like in two years, we're not going to be sitting there going, I mean, unless Toga, this turns into like her thing or something. Maybe. Um, I'm sure we won't be sitting here going, Oh yeah. But two years ago, remember she couldn't take that face. <laughs> sir. I mean, really what should happen is they should have another match and um, they should like play off of it. Yeah. Like, Toga just they should like... do a thing where like Yuki goes for the famouser and then Toga like stands up and then you're not sure whether it's like is it a reversal or is it a you know is she shooting this and then like, Toga just I shoot like... headbutts her. <laughs> I feel like Vince Russo right now where I'm like you oh, gotta <laughs> turn it into a, a work shoot, <laughs> bro. Nobody's gonna know what to expect from Camille. <laughs> bro, Toga's gonna be the going to be the hottest act in the company after she shoots on <laughs> bro i'm telling you you gotta shoot on the casual beauty um uh, okay so maybe don't don't take my advice i'll say um hey guys it's camille you know you, you gotta say it more like that are you doing vince <laughs> russo do what are you doing right now <laughs> That was Vince Russo telling Camille okay. how to do her over. That's what I thought, but I couldn't. I couldn't be sure. I was like, "What's happening?" Yeah, he was the one coaching when they were doing the recording session. I see. Wow, that would be quite a. Re- Can you imagine <laughs> if, after like years, they were like a a little twist? Camille is not the one saying her own name in her intro, <laughs> and it's Vince Russo. <laughs> That sounds like something they would do in, in like DDT. Yeah. They would be like, actually, the person recording it is this person. And then they would come out and win the heavy metal weight championship. Yeah. And then Russo would be doing the Tokyo Go dance. The next match on the show was a six person tag team match. Kaya Torabami, Moka Miyamoto and Ryo Mizunami defeating Hikari Noah, Nao Kakuda and Yuki Aino in 12 minutes and 55 seconds. Kelly, what did you think of this match? 
I liked this. Uh, I thought how I, it was a good idea how they turned working uh, Hikari's light tube wounds uh, as like the main body part they were attacking was a cool kind of twist on that. You don't something you don't normally see. Uh, I thought Yuki Aino looked great here, and she's someone I'm pretty hot or cold on. But I thought she was really good here and. I hope we get a singles match between her and Mizunami because they they had great chemistry. So yeah, overall, really good match. Yeah, I thought this was the best Aino has looked in a long time. It felt it feels like she's been securely in the background for yeah um, many months, and so that was great. I was really excited. I was happy to see Mizunami in sort of a different. It was funny because it's a six person tag, so it's a little bit of a different environment. But I felt like at the end of the day, it sort of gave the same thing that her singles match matches have given, which is like, oh, here's the person in this case, Yuki Aeno, who it's like, oh, now all of a sudden this person feels hot because they went up against Mizunami and, you know, battled and fought. So I thought that was really good. I was nervous at the beginning <laughs> that Hikari No was going to pull a John Moxley. And like the first time she got touched, she would just be bleeding. You know, it would like reopen the wounds and she would be bleeding everywhere in this like mid card match. Um, but didn't happen because she, she, ba- she got she a was taste bandaged. for it. And it was just like, I do, I guess I need to blade every match. Well, no, I didn't even think she would blade. I thought she would just, she had so many cuts. Oh, yeah, yeah. That it would just be like, take a back bump and they're all like, you know, <laughs> but she was bandaged. Um, pretty well but yeah it clearly a showcase match for you know i hope they get a singles match um because i think it could be really fun pa- a real passion injection that's right <laughs> the next match was a singles match miyu watanabe defeating arisa endo in 13 minutes and 26 seconds some strange extensions on endo i'll say that first yeah, because um, it looked like her hair, and then it looked like extensions. Yeah, um, it didn't quite look of like one piece to me. No, not at all. Um, Miyu took a crazy bump on the apron off the drop kick. Yeah, which I really liked. It feels to me like Miyu needs more of a finishing finisher. Like she has the sort of. I don't even know what it's called. Very bad with wrestling moves. But it feels like, especially because she's a power wrestler, it feels like she needs something that's much more like, what, like, Gah, I got you. Mm-hmm. Then it, doesn't she have like the flipping flatliner or whatever you call it? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not even entirely sure what it is. It's kind of like. She it just fe- kind of picks you up and drops you, really. But it feels like a transitional move. Yes, it doesn't. Um, it's never felt like a finisher to me. It feels like the Okada mid-match flapjack that he does. Yes, 100%. Where I'm always like, oh, yeah, that is her finisher when it ends the match. But I'm like, it doesn't really feel like, especially for someone who could do so much with so many different wrestlers because she's so strong. Mm-hmm. It just feels like oh there there could be something better that makes it feel like now the match is over because i've hit this move um it was a good match probably not as good as i thought it not quite as good as i thought it would be felt like a very good showcase for endo um because to me i feel like miyu is so established that just sort of doing these matches it's like yes i know already that she's incredibly talented um it's just every time I watch her, it's so wild because Miyu's in ring doesn't match anything else about her in no. a good way. In a good way, like she comes out and she's like doing the L O V E, and you're like, oh yeah. And then she comes in the ring and she's like, fuck you. That's uh, because she's walking out throwing up gang signs. That's right. Um, but a good match, just one that I was sort of a little bit hopeful would be a little bit better, but solid work. I liked this a lot. It actually might be my favorite match of the show. I went four stars on it. Uh, I thought the pacing was perfect. Really, I think they, it, to me, it felt like Endo had a really good chance at winning a couple times. Like, I was really kind of pulling for her. I thought she might pull it out. 
I loved that Mew did the little tap out in the when she was in the camel clutch. So it's like, oh, there is there was that little bit where it's like Endo could have won. So I thought that was a cool little moment. And I I think this is probably Endo's best match yet so far in her career. So yeah, I I like this a lot. The next match was a celebration of Yuki Arai's second anniversary, a tag match Yuki Arai teaming with Maki Ito to take on the team of Shoko Nakajima and Yuka Sakazaki, the Miracleans, coming out victorious in 15 minutes and 29 seconds. I really enjoyed the team of Arai and Ito teaming together. Mm-hmm. Uh, liked seeing heel Yuka, uh, which, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, that time is growing short. But my big question is, where do you think Yuki Arai goes from here? Now celebrating her second anniversary, still feels like she's not quite there um, in ring, but they clearly see her as a big deal. So what do you think happens? Yeah, I don't know, because she definitely still needs the reps. But you really can't move her down the card without it feeling like a demotion. It's it's weird. She's in a rough spot where it's almost like she got too much too fast and is not she just I don't she's not there yet. So I think I guess you just keep putting her in matches like this. You just keep putting her with people that she can work for. You just got to keep getting her those reps when you can. Uh, I don't know. I thought this match was all right. It just never clicked with me. And when it did, I didn't think it was up to the level of quality that it should be. But like, I, I also can't point at it and be like, oh, this is exactly what was wrong. It just, I don't know. Something about it didn't mesh well for me. Yeah, I can see that. I Like I said, I thought it was... A fine match, but considering everyone who is in it, I sort of was like, oh, at the end of the day, it was, you know, fine. Mm -hmm. The semi-main event of the show was our first title match, the International Princess title, the champion Rika Tatsumi retaining in 13 minutes and 28 seconds over Suzume. Uh, Rika Tatsumi bleeding a little at the end of this match, uh, which I found quite surprising. But I like the story of this match, Suzume bringing it to the challenger. I think that's a story that Tokyo Joshi is very good with in their matches in terms of sort of a younger, less experienced wrestler sort of rising to the challenge, not quite winning, obviously, but that's been a great way for them to sort of lift a lot of these mid-card, undercard wrestlers. We've talked about the Ryo Mizunami matches, which are sort of the staple of that. But I really enjoy this. I went three and three quarter stars. I thought it was a very enjoyable match. I will give this one another four stars. I liked this one a lot. Big match, Suzume came through. Uh, they both played their roles fantastically. Rika was great as just the vicious champion, and Suzume is just the perfect underdog and just the match felt nonstop to me. Like it was just go, go, go. So I, I loved this. I thought it was great. I hope I, I would like to see another rematch. Maybe, you know, Suzume comes back and beats Rika for it at some point. Who knows? That would be cool. But I, yeah, these two have great chemistry and I was very, very happy with this match. And the main event was for the Princess of Princess title, Mizuki defeating the visiting Sawyer Wreck in 11 minutes and 24 seconds. Kelly, this was the match you said when we were previewing the show. You thought, oh, this probably won't be um, quite up to the usual main event standard. But I actually thought that this match was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, um, no, Sawyer Rec proved proved me wrong. Uh, she, she did really well here. She played her role perfectly. Just all she had to do was be tall and strong, and you know what? She did it. <laughs> I think that this shows one way in which these sort of smaller Japanese companies are a little bit 
stronger than American indies in that American indies, when you're sort of announcing matches, it's just like these two people are in the match and they go and they have a match as if they're very like even, they're totally even here. They did exactly what they should have. One of these people is very big and one of these people is very small. Yep. And they played to that in how they wrestled the match and what they did. You know, Sawyer is a hardcore person, a hardcore wrestler. So she leaned on that. Like, they leaned into each person's strengths, which made the whole thing stronger and then made the other person look stronger. You know, they had Sawyer doing bigger wrestler moves. They had Mizuki sort of trying these big strike moments with the foot stomps and other things. So I thought it was really well worked to both people's strengths. I went another three and three quarters. Um, Yeah, that's where I was too. So just thought it was surprising, very good, but really, um, you know, some matches you watch and you're like, I I don't know, I liked it. It was good, you know, I enjoyed it. This one, very obvious. They worked to both of these people's strengths. They hid the weaknesses um, in them. So just an easy, enjoyable match for me. Yeah, it was one of those where it's, they didn't try and force sawyer to be someone else they didn't be like hey go be a super worker thanks it's just like no just be big tall and strong and use your uh do some hardcore stuff it's like cool (laughs) that's what i'm good at let's go do that so that is everything for tokyo joshi's yes wonderland and before we continue on with everything else that's been happening in joshi we want to let you know that today's podcast is brought to you by the bet stamp app which is helping thousands of people win at sports betting for free the same way travelers use google flights or expedia to find the best prices bettors can now use bet stamp to do the same when you place a bet the odds given by a sports book will determine how much you can possibly win even when betting on the same outcome different sports books will offer varying payouts and these differences can be huge. Thankfully, BetStamp allows you to easily line shop for the most profitable odds across all sports books. You can click on any matchup and instantly see all the different odds for game lines, player props, and even futures bets. Line shopping is the simplest way to find an edge in sports betting and maximize your chances of winning long term. On average, BetStamp users win an extra $1,000 or more yearly just by line shopping. You can find the BetStamp app on the Apple iOS Store, Google Play Store, or through your browser at www.betstamp.app. To access all these benefits, sign up using promo code VOW and start your journey to successful sports betting today. If you forget to use the code upon sign up, you can always enter the code in your BetStamp account settings afterward. Check it out. That is promo code VOW. So what else has been happening in the world of Joshi? Stardom has had some other shows. New Blood 8 just recently happened. The big news from that show, Rena defeating Ami Sore to become the new future of stardom champion. Kelly, did you see the picture of the sisters, uh, Hina and Hanan, crying watching Rina win the title? Yeah, that was sweet. That was a nice picture that I liked. Yeah. And of course, the show highlighted by the main event of Tom versus Tom, the long-awaited singles match there. Stardom also recently had at Corican Hall the official Himika retirement ceremony. Sorry to say to Kelly, it's officially happened. She doesn't uh, have any left in the tank. She's got nothing left in the tank. There wasn't there is no salmon blazer? Especially now after she had 31 minute matches against wrestlers at her retirement ceremony. I'm That's... glad they did that because I was. It really seemed like she wasn't going to wrestle on that show, and it's like that's bizarre. <laughs> and that's a classic retirement, yeah, trope. So, um, 
Happy yeah, trails. I'm, I'm very excited to watch that. Yeah, happy trails to Himika. Tokyo Joshi also had some other shows and some big news. The Inspiration Show happened on May 1st. The semi-main, which I really liked, which is surprising considering my previous thoughts on this subject, the Mahiro Kiryu versus Gabajichan match, I thought was very funny. Wow, um, I, I skipped it. I, did, <laughs> I wow. saw that. I was like, no, I'm good. I thought it was very funny, uh, much funnier than usual. Wow. Um, and did enjoy it. But of course, the really the big match of the show, Hikari Noah in a death match with Sawyer Wreck. Just a match. Someone actually asked me a couple days ago, saying, oh, should I watch it? How's the match? And look, I, I was very honest. I said, technically, from a pure in-ring standpoint, is it a great match? I don't know that it is. But I think it's just a very special match. I think it's really cool to sort of have this company that is willing to have a wrestler who's like, hey, I want to do this. As we all know, Tokyo Joshi, not in any way, shape, or form, a deathmatch promotion um, that put this together for Hikari Noah. I think that's really cool. If I were someone looking to become a wrestler, um, that would really stick out to me yeah. as something something really special. And, you know, Hikari Noah, Sawyer did not hold back. Ooh. on her it was you know it wasn't one of those things where it's like oh we're doing a death match and you bring in a couple chairs and you're like oh, okay i mean she got beat she got beat up it was uh, yeah it was it was good it blood let's make chokyo joshi the blood and guts promotion i'm i'm kind of hoping shit like what if prominence comes in now i mean obviously without suzu but i think that would be pretty good for Tokyo Joshi to get Risa Sara in there and Akane Fujita. Well, we'll have to see. I don't, I, it felt to me like this is going to be a one-off deal um, with both Tokyo Joshi and like to me, you know, you never know, but it felt like from Hikari's comments, it was like, wow, I've always wanted to do that. And now I've done it and I probably won't want to do it again. <laughs> um, but you never know. Maybe she does want to do it again, and maybe they will do it again. Yeah. Um, but I thought very cool of Tokyo Joshi to to do that. You know, if they would have said to her, "No, we're not a deathmatch promotion. You can't do that." You know, it's not really wouldn't be surprising. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the Tokyo Joshi is not the promotion you would ever expect this from. <laughs> no. Um, and But the big news from Tokyo Joshi, Yuka Sakazaki announcing she is graduating from the company in December to go abroad. Kelly, shocking news. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I guess I'm happy for Yuka, but at the same time, I, she, will be, she will be greatly missed in Tokyo Joshi. Yeah, I think I always liked watching her, or I do, she's still wrestling there. I do like watching her in Tokyo Joshi. I think it's one of those things where it may have less of, of an effect than people might think. It's not as if there's anyone on this roster who's like, oh, that person is the draw, and the minute you lose them, like, oh, good luck with the numbers. And it clearly feels like Yuka was not being phased out, but it does feel like we've hit the time where the company has said, okay, now it's time for the next, you know, Mizuki, Maki Ito, you know, Suzume moving up the card, Miyu Watanabe. And it does feel like they do have the time and the space for people to, you know, go abroad. Like Miyu, Maki goes abroad a lot. They have the time because they've developed this roster of people who can step in and the whole company is not going to come crashing down, you know, shocking to see her leave totally uh, and completely from her comments. But I think they will be, you know, it will be missed. She's a great wrestler. People really like her. She's a fan favorite. So from that aspect, it will be a loss, but I don't think this is a thing where we'll look back in, you know, two years and think, Oh, Tokyo Joshi's folding. And it all started with Yuka, you know, 
leaving and, you know, the company fell apart. Yeah, no, it, it's, yeah, it's definitely not going to be a company destroying move, but I do, I, you might get like one or two less people that don't go to a show if, or anything just because like, oh, I guess Yuka's not there anymore, but it's not going to be the death of the company. What else has been going on? Marvelous had a show on May 3rd. The big news there, Mio Momono winning the AAAW title, the title that is almost bigger than Mio. Um, <laughs> it, it sometimes looks like that was big. She had it last night at the Queen of the Indie show in California. That a fun show that I watched uh, featuring a lot of Marvelous talent as well as some United States talent, a number of people who were chosen through tryouts to go to Marvelous. So that will be coming up in the future months. Chigusa Nagayo wrestling in a six person tag match and Masha Slamovich winning the whole thing, becoming Queen of Indies, of course. Masha, a long time Marvelous wrestler due to the getting stuck in Japan for the pandemic. So happy to see her reunited with some of the people that she was with for so long and winning that very fun tournament that is on IWTV. Uh, So you can check that out there. Wave had their opening night of the catch the wave tournament. I naively thought they had uploaded some of the matches to YouTube, but it turns out they happened to me. (laughs) They uploaded the 2022 version (laughs) of the tournament onto their YouTube, uh, which felt very like a prank. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, you rascals. I was like, wow, they uploaded that really fast. And then I was like, wait a minute, (laughs) this isn't right. Um, They also had three shows on the 14th, uh, which just happened. Uh, I think a morning show, an afternoon show and a night show with, with catch the wave matches. So not even going to, Uh, I don't even know what the results of those matches are, but really no point in going into the standings because with three shows, they're already out of date. (laughs) Kelly, what's been going on in Choco Pro? Uh, Choco Pro 309 from uh, May 1st. Is that right? I think that's the right date. I don't know. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, is that right? We'll find out. Uh, Emmy Sakura had her goodbye battle royal. She went back to the States for a while. Uh, The battle royal was a lot of fun. And you had uh, Violence's Forever's Kevin Koo in the Battle Royal. So there was a bunch of like fresh interactions there. So it was, it was a good time. Give that a watch if you get a chance. All right. So that is everything that has been going on. But what is coming up in Joshi? Another big stardom show on May 27th. Flashing Champions, their annual show Kicks off, Saya Ida and Momokogo will take on Lady C and Miyu Amasaki. Suri and Ayasakura will take on the Rebel and Enemy team of Ram Kaichou and Mika Ozaki. That should be a fun match. Utami, Saya Kamatani, and Hina will take on Starlight Kid, Ruwaka, and Rina. Mayu Iwatani, Hazuki, Koguma, and Hanan. We'll take on the Club Venus team, Mariah May, Jesse, Zena, and Wakasukiyama. Mika, Suzu, Suzuki, and May Sierra will take on Nanai Takahashi, Yuna Mizumori, and Hanako. Mika, Suzu, Suzuki, and May Sierra, a fun, a fun trio there. Yeah. Um, maybe hinting Suzu, Suzu and May teamed at New Blood, so maybe some movement towards a new unit. Possibly. Hopefully. Possibly. Maybe that's maybe a good unit. <laughs> Micah breaks off and from DDM and does her own thing. Gets a bunch of little high speed wrestlers around her. The high speed title, speaking of high speed, the high speed title will be up for grabs. The champion Azumi will defend in a three way against Saki Kashima and Fuki Gendes. Saki Kashima uh, turning in her certificate for a title shot, even though she technically already did that. Yeah, she already did that. <laughs> uh, but she claimed at the show that actually Stardom said she had done it without her permission. Oh, um, so you know she what? Still Fair. Had a certificate. Fair. 
Uh, the Goddesses of Stardom tag title match will be there. Mirai and Amy Sore, Ami Sore will defend against Momo Watanabe and Natsuko Tora. You know, I got to talk about uh, the New Blood show real fast. Because during oh, the the um, the title match between Rina and Amy, Ami Sore, there they did some in-ring storytelling, which Stardom does not do very much. They had Leto Tai interfere in the title match and cost Ami the title. They moved a story along without it happening on a press conference. We must, we have to reward that. They did a good job. I'm, I'm happy they did that. Yes, but it also involves Oedo Tai interference, which we want to stay away from. But, but it, it made sense. There was a reason for it. It wasn't just uh, throw, in, throw in a suitcase, do a thing. Ha <laughs> we're smoking, reading newspapers. Like they, they, There was a reason for it. It furthered another story. Like they, they, There was solid booking in that match. You know, I, I'm I'm happy for them. Maybe, maybe this, this is the start of something. Maybe they'll be like, hey. We can use these whole wrestling matches to get across our stories. Who'd have thunk? I think, Kelly, I think you're going to monkey paw it into, they're going to turn into NXT and then we're going to regret it. Oh, so now they're just going to do community theater. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but anyway, back to flashing champions. These... Why are my ideas so violent? The semi-main will be an Artists of Stardom title match. Kairi Natsupoi and Sayori Ano will defend against Julia, Mai Sakurai, and Tekla. And the main event, Tom Nakino will go up against Mina Shirakawa in a double title match that I would put thousands of dollars on will go to a time limit draw. Yeah. Yep. That's uh, that one's gonna be a tough watch because it's just gonna be like, oh well, I instantly know what's happening here, <laughs> and what it is zero resolution is what is happening. What else is going on? Seedling has a show on May twenty fifth. They have two uh, tag title preview matches: Asuka versus Rico Kaiju and Makoto versus Ayame Sasamura. Tokyo Joshi has the Hyper Masao produced first hype show coming up on May 25th. There will be a second Hyper Masao audition match between Miyu Watanabe, Raku, Yuki Kamafuku, Suzume, Moka Miyamoto, and Himawari for the rights to become the second Hyper Masao. <laughs> there will also be Shoko Nakajima will go one on one. With the recently returned from the United States, Yoshihiko. And the main event will be Rika Tatsumi and Ariso Endo going up against Yuki Aino and Mahiro Kiryu. A match that has no story except for the their two teams that Hyper Masao has always wanted to see face each other. Oh, you know what? Sure. Yeah. And then 527, May 27th. Shoko Nakajima and Yuki Kamafuku will take on Aja Kong and <laughs> Mahiro Kiryu. What a team. Uh, what a team. Wave has some more shows coming up on the 21st and the 28th. I'm sure there will be some Catch the Wave matches on that. We also have two produce shows coming up. The first one, Sariism, the return of Sari from the banished land of WWE. Uh, a four-match card. Riko Kaiju against Eureka Oka. Arisa Nakajima and Akari will take on Miyuki Takase and Ibuki Hoshi. Jaguar Yakota and Anai Takahashi will take on Keoru Ito and a Mysterious X. And the main event will be Sari against Jihiro Hashimoto. This, this show will be airing live. I believe the URL is sarilive.com. You can buy it and watch it there. And then the Hanakamura Memorial Show Pinks will be happening on May 23rd. There will be the traditional Battle Royal. So far announced Chihiro Hashimoto, Fuminori Abe, Hanako Nakamori, Mensore Oyaji, Super Delphine, Tatsuhito Senga, and Sutomu Osugi, and of course, additional surprise wrestlers. A singles match between Sayori Ano and Miyuki Takase. 
Mika Iwata and Mio Momono will team to face Aja Kong and X. Masao Hanabatake and Chotaro Ashino will take on Ryo Mizunami and Sonoko Kato, Yuka Miyamoto and Ram Kaijou, and Koji Kanemoto and X in a four-way tag team match. Asuka, Suri, and Natsupoi will take on Konami, Rina, and Kaori Yoniyama. And good old Hannah Kimura, also known as Sakura Hirota, will take on a mystery opponent. Kelly, what's going on in the world of Gleet? All right, and Gleet, on the uh, 21st, there's G Pro Wrestling Volume 53, uh, Unagi Sayaka and Yukari Hosokawa takes on the Sendai Girls team of Mika Iwata and Yurika Oka. Uh, Sayaka has really kind of taken on the role as the Gleet women's ace that she took from uh, Miyagi. And she recently had a singles match against Yukari Hosokawa and they after the match they had a talk and it seems like they're gonna they're pushing forward together so we're we're gonna see how high they can take the world of gleet joshi and there you have it that is everything coming up in the next two weeks of joshi so i will hand it over to kelly for his traditional end of show time all right what have i what have i done lately i went to see the guardians of the galaxy 3 it was very good very good movie uh there is a lot of animal violence so if that's an upsetting thing to you then maybe don't see it but also that is the point it is supposed to be upsetting in the movie (laughs) uh to the point where james gunn was given an award by PETA for the movie and how it is such an accurate depiction of animal testing so that that's that's something to know going into it but other than that very fun movie it really feels like the end of an a franchise so it was, it was cool to get to see those characters have kind of one last hurrah. Uh, and then other than that, I, I haven't been doing much. Uh, did did you see the tweet about the guy who went to go see the new Knights of the Zodiac movie and he was the only person in the theater and then just Sony canceled the screening that he was at while he was in the theater? I did not see that. Yeah, the movie is doing so bad that Sony was just like, screw it, we're canceling all these showings because no one's going. (laughs) And this dude was at one, and they're just like, nope, shut it down. Wow. Well, you get a story out of it. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. (laughs) I've been to some... uh... I've been to some showings with very few people in it. I once went to a movie showing. It was me, my friend, and there was one guy sitting like two rows behind us, one single guy. So there were three of us in the whole theater. Watch the movie. Movie ends. Great. I I enjoyed the movie. We're walking out and the guy who was in the theater with us comes up to us. He's like, so what do you, what do you think of the movie? And my friend and I were like, Oh, we really enjoyed it. We didn't really know much about it going in. Like we had just sort of seen, you know, some things about it. And he goes, Oh, I'm the director. (laughs) Uh, And we were like, Oh, and we walked away and I was like, thank God we liked it. (laughs) I mean, I guess if we would have been like, oh, it's terrible. He probably would have just been like, no, okay. And yeah, not told us. Right. What was the movie? It was a movie. I don't even remember what it was called. It it, it was a very small movie. It came out in one theater here in New York because like a lot of really small. Okay. Stuff comes out here. I don't even I would have to look up what the title was. That's amazing. Um. But he was like, yeah, I'm the director. And I was like, yeah, we really enjoyed it. (laughs) Oh, really? Good work. (laughs) I've never been happier to like a movie in my life. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I've had I've had a couple of those where you're in it in the movie, but I've never had one cancel. I had one where the movie just never started. Um, Like the movie was supposed to start at 415 and at 430 I went out and I was like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, whoops, we forgot. (laughs) <laughs> and i was like great and then yeah. i started it eventually but i went up after and i was like if i wouldn't have come out the movie never would have started nope yeah, i'm trying to think one time when i i was saw the peter jackson king kong the lights came on but then they gave us all free tickets to go see another movie so that was cool yeah it all works out yeah and then 
There was at one point when I saw the most recent Jackass movie where the movie stopped and I was not sure if it was a bit. And I was like, is this a part of the movie where they're pranking us? And it's like, haha, it froze, but then it didn't really. But no, it actually did freeze. Did you look up to say, oh, is there someone, is there something that's going to drop down on me? <laughs> that's to yeah, complete there was the a prank. Yeah, there was like a part, because you, you can't trust anyone when you're, when it's in Jackass, you know? <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Well, that is Taylor and Kelly's movie corner. Yeah. For the episode. You but never is... know when you're in a movie theater and Chris Pontius is going to drop out of the ceiling and fart in your face or something. Just like wrestling. You go see wrestling live, you always got to be aware. Yeah. What's around you. Don't wear your best shoes because you might get someone's blood on them or someone stepping on them or something. That's right. For all the people who are going to wear their nice dress shoes. To yeah, nice don't do that. Show, don't do that. Yeah. Well, that is all for us for this episode. We will talk to you again in two weeks. So for Kelly, I am Taylor saying goodbye. Bye, everybody. The new Chevy Silverado HD puts you in command. Own strength with its enhanced available Duramax 6.6 liter turbo diesel V8. Own the lake with its available advanced towing technology. And own technology with an available 13.4 inch diagonal touchscreen. The new Chevy Silverado HD. Own work, own play, own life. Learn more at Chevy.com. Find new roads. Chevrolet. Music, it's not just part of our daily lives, it's part of our wrestling fandom as well, and it has been for decades. That's where this show comes in, Music of the Mat, the podcast devoted exclusively to the music of pro wrestling, hosted by Andrew Rich. Hey, that's me. Each episode delivers a different topic with a variety of great guests, fun conversations, musical analysis, and of course, a heartfelt pun or two. New episodes drop every other Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcast app of choice. Check out Music of the Mat only on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Cheering at pro wrestling shows in Japan is back, and 2023 is already shaping up to be a big year in the history of pro res. That's why you should listen to the Emerald Flow Show. From the Royal Road to the Green Mat, Paul and Gerard take you into the world of All Japan Pro Wrestling and Pro Wrestling NOAA. Not only do we analyze events, but we examine business, who is getting over, what angles are working, or not. Occasionally, we take a look at other Japanese promotions like DDT and Zero One. So if you're looking for more coverage of the world of Japanese wrestling, check out the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, available on all of your favorite podcast apps.